which means we right. officially started. So I had to hit the button to Boom. make sure that we officially started. Yeah, for well, episode on 20. behalf of all of my homies on TikTok, uh, Wang Shang Hao. I mean, we're. What means it, y'all? Danye. Xi Xi. Okay, anyway, that's all the Chinese I know. Sorry. Well, we're on TikTok now, but we're not streaming to TikTok yet. You have to have a thousand followers on TikTok in order to stream live. But we'll at least be able to put up this video and, and you know. No, burn. they limit you to 10 minute videos. So I'm actually going to have to start like clipping shit because apparently nobody oh, well, else you're is You're definitely going to want to clip out the Yona Chinese for TikTok because it is technically still about 40% Chinese owned. It's granted the other 60% is American owned, but it's, um, never mind. It's the Chinese company, right? <laughs> right. And you're hearing us all right, right, Ash? Let me know in the live stream chat. <laughs> There's been so much a much ado about nothing when it comes to TikTok, and you gotta love a bunch of um, octogenarian diaper shitters at the DC nursing home to all start talking about the TikTok. <laughs> I, Fuck! They still can't I even, don't even change know what the, to say about that. The, they still can't reset the clock on their VCRs, man. And it's like twenty. 2024. I it mean, was spent... weird at the last so to uh, State of the Union. Yeah. Uh, which was basically uh, a Biden campaign speech. I guess they all are pretty much, to be fair. But um, really over the top. Um, and the weirdest thing about it was seeing all of these 80-year-olds with diapers and false teeth looking like a bunch of fucking middle schoolers heading to the cafeteria, all of them face buried in the fucking fondle slabs. It was weird. Really weird seeing a whole bunch of old people getting all fondle slabby because it's not like that around here in good old Appy Latchy. I mean, you just really don't see the old folks, yeah. the boomers getting all, you know, just slovenly over the phone yeah is that a word well, even my mom even had difficulty with uh even with the tablet right even with the because she couldn't she wasn't going to do a smartphone she was like fuck all that noise um she didn't actually say that my mother would never have uttered that phrase ever in right. her life as far as i know um but yeah she she had a tablet and and struggled with it mightily like i I don't know. I didn't. I didn't understand because, like, I understand how you know neural capacity works and how you how you create new habits and and literally set them in place and all of that stuff. And I was like, you just keep doing the same stuff over and over again. Like, how are you not figuring this out? But yeah, I can I can see that. I can see them just being like, no, what what do I need this for? How does this make but, my you know, life better? It, it turns out Bill Gates, the graphic user interface, is not a winning. is is not is not a win all for everyone involved. You know, some people don't really get into the whole gooey experience. You well, know, the here's the other thing too, right? The education system that the Boomer generation went through is completely different from the one that we went through and like worlds apart from the one that the youngest kids are going through. Well, yeah, I right? dude, I, I would it, almost, those be devices are more money. tailored towards the humans that are being produced by the public school system today. I bet money that it's all the Drizzle's and mother shit. is able to read some business shorthand which is a specialized type of cursive that was taught in all American high schools. You were taught how to oh, type yeah. on a typewriter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She could you do steno and all of that stuff. As yeah. well as print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She and was trained as a secretary. Shorthand cursive, which is like all kinds of these different little cursive abbreviations for words and phrases. Yeah. You know, um, and I mean, that's even a little bit beyond my level of expertise. I can't read much cursive shorthand, but my mom can. Yeah. And I'd say your mom can too, because again, yeah. 
curriculum has changed. I mean, hell, well, back then they actually had an academic curriculum, and they never sent home a booklet describing the discipline code. I mean, there's been a sea change of emphasis in schooling from indoctrination and the rearing of citizens, obedient workers to, you know, eventually Daryl Gates from the LAPD and creator of the um, special weapons and tactics squads or SWAT Mm -hmm. teams, as they're now known in virtually every single law enforcement agency on the fucking U.S. soil has a SWAT team. Um, And it all started with Daryl Grant, and he was the one that worked with Nancy Reagan to start putting what are now known as school resource officers or SROs into the schools uh, as part of a public relations program to brand the police as the good guys. And, you know, uh, and of course I'm referring to the uh, drug abuse resistance education program or DARE, you know, as Nancy said, a.k.a. the throat goat, Nancy Reagan. That's right. Um, Are there any pictures of Nancy on Daryl no, Gates' lap? Kids. I'm sorry? I said, are there any pictures of Nancy sitting on Daryl Gates's lap that you know of? Can we go and find that? There's a lot of pictures with Daryl Gates and Nancy Reagan. I bet. They were Starsky and Hutch on this operation. They were Starsky and Hutch. And so Mr. SWAT team inventor is the one that begins what is now affectionately termed the school to prison pipeline. Yeah, or I I like to call it the hip hop pipeline, but same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Just different vernacular. I would consider that. African American vernacular English, A A V E, is the linguistic term, but uh, I think most people would just call it jive. But I've also heard ebonics. Hmm. Um, it's just slang. Yeah, and it's and the thing about it is, talk. although slang, they want to linguistically attribute things like. I then, now I mean, what you want there? Go on in. You know, they want to attribute that to African American vernacular English, but in fact, that is a dialect and accent of English that was imprinted upon the slaves by non Africans. That that is a southern drawl when you hear people talking like that in Compton and Watts and other parts far flung all across the United States, they're basically speaking fucking foghorn leghorn. I said, I said, I said, now hold on, son. That's what it is. It's southern ass fucking English. Granted, there's slang words put in, but the we're a slave nation. And so most of the slaves, most of the have nothings, because it's no longer about the have mores and have lesses. At this point, it's already pretty much there are the select few have everythings. Hmm. And then there's the rest of us that pretty much have nothing. I think most Americans easily fall within the category of can't afford a thousand dollar emergency right now. Be wiped the fuck out. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You wipe the fuck out. Yeah, don't don't uh, have that much in savings and cash no, and this and that and the other. Either. I mean, no, there they there is the highest on record credit card debt in America right now, higher than it's ever been. Sounds like a bubble to me. Uh, that's one way of looking at. It. Well, me. what happens? Here's the thing. All right, so you've got all these people who have all this debt. And they're probably also folks that uh, took took the jab, right? Right. 
because they're they're more than likely they're they're buying the Kool Aid. They have a lot of debt. They have enough debt. It's, I think it's a foregone conclusion, it's right? Just, it's a door. they're gonna they're gonna disappear soon, right? And they're probably gonna leave still owning that debt. What happens to that debt when they die? Oh, oh, oh! I can tell you right now, it gets passed down to their uh, heirs and the sign. Yeah. They go uh, literally. That's even a hell of before a racket. the bodies are planted, they start shaking down survivors. All sons, all daughters that go after brothers, sisters, any surviving parent. Absolute ruthless. Now, of course, they don't do it themselves. That's what collection agencies are for. <laughs> and you get, and they've gotten really crafty on the phone, too. They'll be like, you know, let's call you up. to be like, and you answer the phone, you're like, you're not sure about the number and everything, but, you know, you recognize the area code, and you answer the phone, and they're like, oh, hey, James, what's up? They're like, um, excuse me? And who is this? Oh, so I'm talking to James. But I'm on to you, buddy. You know how, you know the shit they pull, man. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what they pull. That's, you know that's why I have specific questions that uh, I don't answer their questions. I I shoot questions back at them yeah i don't answer questions i ask questions i don't say that but i'm smart enough to direct the the conversation where i want it to go as opposed to where they want it to go because i'm not re i mean i am technically reading from a script but i already know the script that they're reading from so they don't they don't know the script that i'm reading from yeah it, it it fucks them up. It fucks with them hard. You know, that's kind of the issue I think that we have right now in what Death to Tyrants likes to call the Mids East or the Reggie Orient, as it were. Um, the Mids East, the Reggie Orient. And, uh, you know, Wait, that where, day where, after, is this, um, where is this magical place, this Mids uh, East? Brutal. Uh, it's, it's the Greater Israel Project. New Starbucks ah, gotcha. and McDonald's coming soon. Um, in fact, the United States Army and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, along with some of our salvage uh, watercraft, are not able to help in the Baltimore recovery right now because they're busy piling up chunks of Gaza Strip rubble with arms and legs and baby teeth still embedded in them, dumping them into the water as they hastily build some brand new infrastructure for the Zionist project, um, the infamous Gaza Pier. Um, oh, yeah, the floating pier. And so, interestingly enough, brilliant. the Baltimore brilliant story idea. and the Iran story not a and the Israel story all. and the Russia story and the Chinese story with the Wanlin City earthquake, they're all fucking connected. Now, but I'm going to slow down. It's only 1013 here in the beautiful banjo filled paradise of Appalachia. Um, but you'll see before we hit midnight, every one of these fucking stories is all tied to the same thing. Oh, yeah. That's why we come here and convene every Thursday night to get fact harder and to find out more. Fuck around. And here we are. That's right. And today is Yona. Do you, did you look at the date today? Yes, April the 4th be with you, young Jedi. That's right. April the 4th, 2024, or 44224. What, 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 kind of, what kind of juju can you weave on a day like that? With three four, fours four, two, and, four. and two twos. That sounds like walking farts. You need to find a toilet. Deep shit, dude. 4424. Oh, here we go. Rob says it all leads back to the Jesuits. That's it. That's where you can find your answers. I I, I mean, all roads lead to Rome. That's right. And think about it. There's a connection again there with Israel and Malta and the Knights of Malta. Where was GTR5 USS Liberty towed to and repaired after it was brutally and savagely attacked 
by Zionist military forces. Uh, that would I'm, be I'm gonna guess Valetta, Malta. Port of Malta. Yeah. I was right. I get a point it's for that. All fucking connected. All connected. So the connection with Iran and Israel would be that um Wait, uh, all right. Iran knows what cards Israel is playing with. Iran knows what cards the United States is playing with. You mean nukes. And now that Israel has completely jumped the fucking shark and attacked You mean and by bombing the consulate members in Syria. of the Iranian ambassador's staff by directly shelling the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria. I mean, that's no one has ever done that. The United States did it once and apologized profusely, which is really uncharacteristic for the United States. They normally give no fucks and just drop bombs anywhere and don't give right. a fuck. Well, then it must have been really been a mistake then. Um, and the whole point is to escalate the, the at this point, the only way Israel can overcome their enemies is to draw the United States into a complete and total all-out war in the Middle East. Right. Because so that, that is fucked. the plan. They've it? lost all their base. There, there's still a few crackpots out there that are ride or die for Israel, but they are now the fractious minority. And not even the loud minority anymore. They're literally being drowned out by about 5 billion other human beings on the earth that are all screaming at the top of their lungs right now. Fuck Israel. They're genocidal goddamn maniacs. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the United States and Israel at this point in history have never, ever been more politically isolated from the rest of all of humanity. And well, they're literally just Israel. going right off the cliff like O'Doul's, O'Doul's rules, O'Doul's rules. Israel's used to getting away with whatever they want. Right off the cliff. That's the thing. Israel has been getting away with whatever they have wanted basically since their existence. I mean, this, yeah. this is not poorly documented. There's like two months worth of Grand Theft World episodes where you, you can go and educate yourself on everything. From the very first idea of there being a new Jewish homeland up to the founding of the state of Israel in 1948. Fund. Yeah. In 1830-something. So it's not, it's not an unknown story. Like, it's been going on for a long fucking time. Knowing but I, I like this, the way... I was listening to Nico earlier today. Nico House from Mikasa Sukasa Network. And Nico... Um, how did he put it? Oh, he said that um, the Zionists are the single most protected class on earth. Yes. They're literally allowed to say and do things that no one else has ever been allowed to do before Correct. or since. Correct. I mean, take the example of to fucking today. Again, the live stream genocide continues in full instant replay at 1080p and again 6 billion people screaming at the top of their fucking lungs mm -hmm. and they're making serious fucking moves now 75th anniversary of nato serious so fucking we got moves. anthony blinken um Thank trumpeting you. that <clears throat> ukraine is all into nato we're gonna i get was ukraine just about to NATO. bring that up Ladies and gentlemen, World War III is officially back on the table. That's right. Mark it down right. April see, 4th. I mean, now you don't even four, fuck four. you in. When Ukraine's a NATO member, all, mem four, all four, other NATO more states war. have to come to their defense because that's the NATO pact. It's the North Atlantic yeah. Treaty. I guess Victoria Newland crawled out of her, uh, her hole and saw her shadow today. So uh, we're going to have four more years of war. Yay. Yeah. I'm no fan of George Washington, but he, you know, I'll recognize wisdom when it's spoken, even by fools, racists, and slave owners. And when it comes to, and Washington was all three, but 
when Washington gave his farewell address in Philadelphia before leaving office. The single largest warning he gave to the new nation called the United States of America was, at all costs, we must avoid foreign entanglements Mm -hmm. or they will destroy the United States. Period. It was almost like he knew something. And so, you know, that, you know, NATO combined with Israel is the death knell for the American empire. It's already Mm -hmm. on its dying breath, but still crawling around, still twitching, still moving, obviously losing blood, losing influence, never been more isolated. But there's still an American empire alive and well as we speak on April 4th, 2024. But, Nye, the end is here. The end is now. I mean, we couldn't beat Vietnam. We couldn't beat North Korea. We couldn't beat Iraq. We couldn't beat Afghanistan. But we're going to beat Iran, Russia, and China all at the same fucking time. Bruh. Uncle Sam's about to be put in a permanent fucking timeout with a dunce cap left on his head. It's pretty bad, dude. No, Israel's going to get it first because I, in my opinion... Look, 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 look. I went to this because you made your comment, Drizzle, that people don't know my cards. They don't know... The, the 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 collection agent on the phone with you doesn't know the script you're reading from. And in that same regard, we don't have humans. We, we don't have human intel in Iran. We don't, we really don't know their capacity. Yona, Yona, if, if everybody on the planet is not at war with one another, then there's no reason for the UN to step in and start swinging its dick around, right? right? You have to have the conflict in order for that to happen. So, you know, these it's like birthing pains, right? It's we there's new world coming, and uh, you got to reach in there and and grab it, you know, on the on the slimy bits and and you know, get a good I grip on it. If you know, like the stuff we were uh, entertained with uh just last night uh listening to um bill cooper um where yeah. he was giving out his homework assignment telling people to go down to their oh, local shit. library i forgot to do that and crack I open that with homework. some united states code books and jump into the parts where it is already united states public federal law that the blue helmets yeah will be taking your guns and that was signed in the law in the 60s i mean it's like it's not a conspiracy if it's on recorded public records that are publicly available i mean it's receipts it's like don't let the book hit you in the face because it's literally written in a book that i can throw at your face i mean goddamn dude and that and you heard bill cooper he's really getting pissed off at the end he's like at the, he's like you don't want to do this oh, yeah. homework he was assignment. Done. You don't want to look this up. Fuck off. You suck. Yeah. Basically. That was a good episode. That really was. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we're already here. And so, and we already, you know, they've already cleared the trees. They've already cleared the runway. They've already even put up fucking lights. And, and they're already here. I mean, Two of the parts of the old Norfolk uh, Navy base are already UN bases now. Yeah. Well, they're they're uh, NATO property. Yeah. Which I guess yeah does technically make them UN. Yeah. Yeah. Two of the largest seaports in the entire world uh, were NATO. there in Southern Virginia, <coughs> and uh, we just just gave it away. Billions upon billions of dollars worth of of real estate, and oh, there you go. But if you think about it, with you know, as as we know, for well, I say we referring to the greater 
Grand Theft Worldage community. But as Rich has explained with the blackmail moment with Rockefeller doing the dirty deed, birthing the United Nations, ramming through the UN Charter, and then going back and then adding all this other shit in the background, you know, secretly, and then setting up this special security council with permanent veto power. And I mean, again, completely antithetical to the actual UN Charter. All of that was set up under guise of blackmail, as we know. And and quite frankly, you know, I used to think, well, that's the moment when we lost our sovereignty as a sovereign nation. But, you know, since that time, I've, I've gone back and I'm reading um, Carol Quigley again, Anglo-American Conspiracy. And honestly, at this point, I would tend to agree more with, um, uh, I think he's a, He's actually at Texas A&M now. He was at LSU. But um, Gerald Horn, history professor, hmm. very prolific writer. Um, he says that there's never been sovereignty in the United States. That the United States has always been a colonial project of Europe and nothing has changed. And that Europe yeah. calls the shots in America. And well, I mean, I guess for that I mean, part, you could say that Europe calls the shots in Israel too. and so. When we say that the Zionist state is controlling Israel, it's not Zionist Arabs. It's not Zionist Middle Easterners. Listen yeah. to the fucking accent on Sky News and BBC, yeah. where they're you know got a Welsh or Scottish lilt or what the fuck ever. I mean, yeah, they're the all same fucking, white same fucking empire that's been running the show for the last uh, who knows how long. Who knows how long? It's the city of London, baby. Yeah, which is not a part of the United Kingdom. Correct. Correct. It is sovereign ground. Just like the Vatican is sovereign ground. There's it's the exact your same deal. And just like Washington, D.C. Isn't that interesting? Uh-huh. Isn't that interesting? It's a federal militarized district now, not yeah. part of the United States of America. And of course, a uh, bit uh, a bit note of trivia there. Um, part of Northern Virginia used to be part of the actual District of Columbia. Yeah. Because the District of Columbia yeah, was, originally was a, a square. Perfect diamond shaped yeah. square. A perfect diamond. And of course, the Potomac River goes right through it. And so, during the Civil War, there was the awkward thing of, you know, Maryland, and Maryland was a border state, and D.C. was part Maryland and part Virginia, which was the heart of the Confederacy. And you had people all over Washington, D.C., still owning slaves during the Civil War. And so, that's when we see the first of several reparations paid by the u.s federal government for slaves i'm sorry i misspoke for slave owners because lincoln had to have the public relations victory so in order to get rid of slave ownership in the washington in the district of columbia he just paid first thing off. he did was just get rid of the virginia part yeah. well, well you just too. keep that part yeah fuck it we're just going to focus on the maryland part because there's way too many slaves to buy out in Falls Church and Alexandria and all this other shit. So um, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just worry about, you know, Georgetown and everything over here on, on yeah. you know, next PD. Oh, Alexandria so, was banging back then from what yeah. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Major slave markets there. And then right in the middle, because it was in, Alexandria was in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Until 1863, right. um, I think. Right, but you didn't yeah. have to go across the river. Right. You just go to Alexandria. It's awesome. And so Lincoln then paid the slave owners for the freedom of the slaves as well as ongoing reparation payments for the lost profits that they had planned to make from those slaves for however many more years they expected. Um, service 
and, and so you know they had to figure all that shit out um and so it's interesting um you know whenever people talk about you know it's just unconscionable for the federal government to ever pay repara- reparations to um uh what do they call it a a, a class of uh those who have been uh, damaged or suffered property loss. Uh, Victim? Yeah, victims. Yeah. Or, or, you know, but, I mean, in this case, the victim is... I don't know, rubes? uh, Dupes? What do you... You know, I mean, it's basically the same thing that we have today with, with free trade agreements and investor dispute resolution. Yeah, Where, exactly, exactly. Rob is exactly right. We are all fucking tax cattle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guarantee every American citizen could recite their social security number from memory. I can. I can. Serial I can number. do it right now. That that That's your tax cattle number that goes on that's your right. little ear tag that hangs yep. right next to the bell under your neck. And I can do it from memory. I, I'll tell you, that's how I'll know that the end is near when I can't remember my social security number anymore. Oh, thank God. I'm about to, I'm about to get off this shit. Yeah. But you know, this, um, I think the next shoe that's about to drop is, um, well, I'll put it this way. I think that Israel is about to look like the pass of Thermopylae with 300 Spartans looking down on a sea of fucking Persians. That would be Iran. That would be Iran. Persia. Same place. Um, but they're not, Iran they're not has, Spartans. They're there is Israel. What was it? The, was it? Was it the three hundred Spartans at the yeah. Pass of Thermopylae? Yeah. Versus the they, they were Persians. Sp- yes, but they were yeah. Spartans. These people are not Spartans. These people are uh, infinitely softer. Than yeah, the Spartans. I just i I don't see the IDF in the same light as some Spartans. Not, Not even close. Quite. Literally opposite ends of the spectrum. Spartans on one side, inch dick force on the other. Well, so what what happens in the prophecy? And maybe you don't even know. Maybe this is a question I'll have to find an answer to on my own. But what supposedly happens in the prophecy after the entire world turns against Israel? Oh. Then they turn against the United States. Oh, so they turn both against both Israel and the United States. Israel gets it first. And then they all turn and look at the United States and say, Israel is your goddamn fault. You're just as guilty. In fact, worse. Hmm. How long Israel do you think a process like that takes? The United States has done this to... Laotians, Cambodians, Vietnamese, East Timorese, Guatemalans, El Salvadorans. I mean, God damn, I, I better not. I've already started a list and I'm not going to be able to finish it, man. How many tribes? And I, I haven't even scratched the surface to even bring up how many tribes in North America All right. that so, were deliberately and methodically hunted to extinction yeah so how how is israel supposed to rebuild the third temple with the whole world coming for it it is the whole story just seems like somebody made it up like the bible oh i didn't say that out loud no. edit that out totally not made up or copied from earlier text right Totally not One edited. One man's Mithras is another again, man's Horus. Again, another man's and Geshe again, another man's and Jesus. again. There you go. Yeah. Christ is king. Yeah. These people are fucking insane. Yeah. 
like clinically insane, psychopathic. Lost complete touch with reality. Yes. Living in a total delusional fantasy. Yes. Yeah. I, I just, I don't understand how people allow it to go on. I really don't. That's, that's the thing that I still can't wrap my head around is like, why isn't the population going like, no, we need to do something about you right now. You're out of hand. This needs to stop. It doesn't. There's I, what I got to go to work tomorrow. It's really, really exposing in broad daylight the 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 reach and the actual hard power of the criminal global cartels that run this fucking planet when there's deafening silence in the muslim world i mean every single fucking muslim country should already be in israel right and they're not. Right. Well, uh, they're all being held back by Saudi Arabia. Is what I Although heard. Although the, the, I don't know if you heard the break. Apparently news, MBS United, has, a, uh, has a, a large oil member and likes to swing it around. Allegedly. The UAE broke off all diplomatic relations with Israel today. Oh, really? Yeah. Major development. That's progress. And Iran told Israel straight up we will respond to our attack on our embassy and there will be retaliation upon Israel in Israel by Iran wait for it we're coming to kick your fucking ass oh and you're oh, just going to take an ass I just it. figured it out yeah I just figured it's it out over. Yona. it is over for Israel over well what's going to happen right is uh, they're going to bomb Al-Aqsa Mosque and they're going to make it look like it was Iran in retaliation for Israel striking the embassy in Syria. I could see that. Yeah. And they're going to do again, it Monday during the eclipse, same yeah. time that they sacrifice the cows. Fucking all uh, hell's going to break Timing loose. is everything. Yeah. This is, uh, this, again... Uh, you know, for folks who, who haven't tuned in before, uh, Liberty Radio is for purely entertainment purposes. None of this shit That's is right. going to happen, people. No, this is going to happen. Come on. We have vivid imagination. And it's broadcast in right. audio form. Um, you know, the the biggest single issue that remains, I think, um, is the fact that, uh, dare I say, a majority of the world's population now is hip to the fact that we don't have sovereign governments that don't represent our sovereign interests, whether I'm speaking from the perspective of a Spanish farmer, French farmer, German farmer, Dutch farmer, Italian farmer, German farmer. <laughs> Indonesia, all over the fucking world, man. Mm -hmm. People know about fucking Klaus Schwab. People see, I mean, the vast majority of the hoi polloi poorlings are totally fucking hip to what's going on. And it's really ironic now that it's actually the, I don't want to say the upper crust elite, we'll say the cake elite. The cake elite, the, the professional managerial class that mm -hmm. are still getting to, uh, being allowed to enjoy a modicum of a middle aid of a of a middle class type life. Oh yeah. Where okay. they can still yeah. have the nice house and two cars in the driveway and you know. Um which was kind of the norm back in the eighties, but that was forty years ago. Hmm. <laughs> you know, it's it's out of touch for the majority of America. Well, in nineteen thirty nine a brand new home cost you three thousand nine hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. And now we're all just, I guess, waiting for the collapse so we can all just start squatting in homes. There's no collapse coming. All pay rent to banks. There's the y'all can stop waiting. There is no collapse coming. 
things are just going to deteriorate to a certain point and then they will stop deteriorating. There will be a, 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 an equilibrium achieved at that point and everything will just be at that level from now on and, and probably still deteriorating just a little bit. I mean, banana republics don't really fail. The juntas fail. Uh, yeah, they and, just get replaced you know, they by have other to put in new puppets, and you know sometimes they have to, as the Israelis would say, go in with a little bit of kinetic force, and I don't know, yeah. mow the lawn, well, trim it, some hedges. Yeah, like you know? Israel's been running the show like, for like at least the last twenty years, if not longer yeah. than that. Kind of like on the same level of like a General Rios Mont in Guatemala. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Go around and clean shit up. You know, they're whip about the to be deposed. Leaves into shape. Right, and then the Chinese are going to install their junta, and they'll run the show for you know thirty or forty years or whatever. Well, I mean, what about what Bill Cooper was saying last night about folding sovereign militaries into the UN? That mm-hmm. all of this has been laid out; it's all been negotiated upon, signed upon, printed, and it's been passed as public fucking law i mean uh, it, again the you know um go back to last night's show which i don't i don't guess the bill cooper stuff is up on the it's on uh rumble and it's on uh twitter but it's the entire or, three hour broadcast so it's not like right. cut up or anything like that you have to go to the you segments. have to go to the end but when you go to the end you'll find the bill cooper spot where he literally cites volume and page number and the USC code for the public law of all the things, um, all this stuff. And, and bear in mind, most of this was signed into law, uh, in the sixties. You know, this isn't even Nixon. This is Johnson and Kennedy that signed this shit, you know, and they, they've been updated it, but I mean, Oh, and Truman, um, Oh, Bill was Bill was yeah, hot yeah. It, when it, he got to the Truman stuff. Truman. Yeah. It began with Harry Truman. Re- really and truly, it was Truman and the end of World War II saw the end of any semblance of U.S. sovereignty anymore. And sadly, it's taken us 75 years to kind of parse through all the bullshit floating around to figure out that National sovereignty is already gone. I mean, you know, when you have to swear a loyalty oath to the Zionist state of Israel that you will never participate in the boycott, divest, or sanctions protest known as BDS simply in order to receive Texas food stamps from the food stamp office in Austin. Uh, Yeah, our sovereignty was lost long ago. Yeah. When we literally, as American citizens in a state like Texas, have to swear a loyalty oath to a foreign country just to get any type of assistance from the state of Texas. Yeah. It's law there. And and not just Alabama and a number of others. Yeah. And the same goes with with things like NAFTA. Because any time that you make your economy dependent upon the economy of another country, you're you're ceding some of your sovereignty to that country. Yeah, it's no longer a closed system at that point. And so this whole thing of global trade and good global governance has been about dissolving local sovereignty. By my estimation, going all the way back to the uh, Alimentus papal dictum. When was Which that? is fourteen fifty, right after the Spanish Inquisition. Okay. Wow, that was Codex Alimentus, the the Codex Alimentus, the 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 papal dictum. Right. Uh, and and w- which you know begins the conquest of the New World, um, and slowly but surely we then begin to see the little duchies and fiefdoms and independent kingdoms and such uh slowly get absorbed into 
democracies and republics and nation states and the rise of nationalism to just then further up, further the project into then rolling them up into European Union and North American Free Trade Agreement and and then eventually just get it all wound up into fucking good global governance. Rule it all from one seat. You know, again, it's the rebirth of the Roman Empire. Roman Empire was good global governance. It, it's world empire ruled by a cabal. It's a grand theft world, literally, and we're living mm-hmm. in it. And here we are. And it's it's been it, 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 this thing with World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab is just the latest face mm-hmm. of a well concerted policy to erase autonomy and sovereignty from the planet. Mm-hmm. They've been doing it for uh, well over 500 years yeah. half a fucking yeah. millennia now well they they've really been going at it for the last 115 125 years like they've, they've Things really had yeah. tremendously in the 1830s like we, the you 1830s look at things like the, the graduated turning. income tax and the whole central bank structure uh and all of that shit that they set up and refined over the course of a century uh, that is insane the amount of control that gives you over the ordinary individual. Mm-hmm. Especially when you can't does, even print your it, own it money and all the money you class. use. You know, we, we can't even print our own money. And all the money that we use, we borrow. So we have to pay interest on the physical currency we're even using. And at this point, we've nearly reached the point to where we can't even afford the interest payments on our exploding national debt Mm -hmm. where they're literally just adding trillions at a time now every few months it's just fucking hockey stick if you graph it the 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 taking on of debt the money printing um and you know you know to me if we were going to see an implosion of the U.S. empire and a collapse of the U.S. federal government. If we were going to see that, it would require, in my estimation, a total and complete loss of confidence in the U.S. dollar by the general American public. If there's a complete loss and the dollar completely fucking tanks, everyone stops using the dollar, that kills the power of the Federal Reserve that kills the power of the federal government because their carrot and their stick has always been funding with the dollar. When all they have to fund with is the dollar and the dollar is worthless, they have no more power. Uh, They have no more carrot. All they have is a stick at that point. And now we get to swing sticks at each other. And there's more guns in the American public than all law enforcement officers put together, all of the UN, all of the U.S. military, it it will be, yeah, they won't win. Yeah, but like, they won't what, win. what are 350 million people going to use for currency? Are they going to use rubles, pesos, what, euros? Hmm. Like that, well, yeah. given the current state of uh, infrastructure and everything else, There'll be barter and there'll be new currencies. I mean, you know, the United States has not always used the U.S. dollar. That's true. I I can go back to some of these old land grants and land revolutionary land warrants and stuff. The the money of the United States has changed several times. You know, we used to use pounds and sixpence and everything else, but it was American pounds, not British pounds. I mean, and there's been other, you know, and. Even when it comes to dollars, not all dollars are the same. We've had gold back dollars. We've had green back dollars. You know, we got petro. Well, I don't even know if we have petro dollars anymore. Petro dollars kind of fucked. We even had uh, red backs at one point, didn't we? That's right. Yeah. I would love to have some of that old paper money from the 1800s. That would be awesome. Just have it like framed up. Because those are really artifacts all too, there man. is at this point is just faith, just faith and confidence of the public in the political system. 
faith and confidence of the public in the money system, faith and confidence in the public in the U.S. military, faith and confidence from the U.S. public in the deep state. I mean, and uh, from what I'm seeing, the American people are far too pacified, far too domesticated yeah. to ever pull anything like that off. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's there's a lot of dogs in this country, but they're dogs that won't hunt. They're waiting for kibbles and bits. That's you know, good. Uh, that's good analogy. Because they've become fully domesticated, you know. And it's not like you can't have an indoor dog that still goes out and hunts. That's why they make doggy doors for dogs that, you know, go in and out as as the need arises, mm-hmm. you know. Those are the dogs you really don't want to fuck with. Because they can go inside and eat good, or they can come outside and eat your fucking ass off. And they do. Um, And there are still dogs like that in this country. But, I mean, to compare today's American society to the American society of 100 years ago, um, you know, fortunately here in Appalachia, we still have a lot of the 100-year-old society still alive here today because there's a lot of places that are still off the grid because the grid just never got that far (laughs) Hmm. the grid got to the mouth of the holler and stopped never went further everyone up that holler never had electric never had running water never been connected to the government some of them have never filed fucking taxes um go up there and fuck around and find out so you know there, there are particularly here in Appalachia and other um, extremely rural areas, there are very hardy, self-sufficient Americans. Um, yeah. And, they and that be used here to be the majority the of the country. Gone. The majority of the country used to be yeah. rural and farming. and um, But that was 100 years ago. That's no longer the case. And so today... The rural, no, they industrialized us in the you know 20th the rural century. country folk are now just painted with one broad brush, one broad brush of just all being a bunch of fucking red MAGA hat wearing yeah. hillbillies racist and hicks, fucking Trumper truther, you know, pick yeah. your pejorative, you know, uh, or 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 as the Homeland Security Administration would classify most Americans, they're domestic violent extremists because they believe in the constitution and they like that's right are all or being patriotic wearing patriotic clothing again another telltale sign you better let your fusion center know my neighbor keeps putting up an american flag i'm worried about him you know well speaking of the fusion centers you know uh apparently the (laughs) fbi now has employees that spend their entire day uh driving around the country and having conversations with average Americans about what they post on social media. Right. I've seen a couple of videos. Can you imagine being paid by the federal government to go and harass people about their social media posts and actually doing it? Hey, if the pay is good and you keep cashing the checks and they never bounce, What's up with this Barney the Dinosaur meme on your Facebook page and the comments about Anthony Blinken? Are we not one big happy family? We came here to check to make sure that your mind is right. And if not, um, you need to go with us. Like how, how are people, like, I guess there, there are people who don't do social media, right? So they they don't get kind of the the juicy morsels and tidbits that gets force fed to the rest of us, right? Because again, right. Yeah, you gotta look, ladies and gentlemen. This is how a dialectic works. If you're going to have a civil war, you have to prep both sides of the war at the same time. Otherwise, That's it's right. not going to work. All right. 
So you, there has to be that animosity that there has to be that exactly. instigation and antagonization. Yes. And most of this is all about antagony. That's right. That's right. Getting people primed to the point that they're ready to rip somebody's throat out and they don't care who it is as long as it's the other. And social you media know, I, just I, helps I, them I, do that. I really picked that up on like the whole faux controversy that was invented about <coughs> trans gun rights and saying, you know, that, that tra and, trans again, guns have trying rights. to mix different um, wedge issues to just further enrage and activate more antagony. Oh yeah. Um, when it, it's all just the most basic form of divide and conquer. And of course, um, I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop in terms of uh, this is an election year. November is approaching ever so quickly. And I fully well expect before the November election, I'm predicting it now. I hope I'm wrong. I don't want to see it happen. But I think before this November election, there will, in fact, be another so-called pandemic. There will be another shelter in place. There will be another lockdown. Yeah, there will really, be another exercise really, of emergency yeah, yeah, powers yeah, yeah. because once really they taste that, that power, right they're never going to give it up, Drizzle. There, uh, all right, so I think it's a little early for predictions, quite honestly. Yeah, I know there's shit in the news cycle about bird flu and it's jumping to cows they're just using this as an excuse to kill cows and then just fucking right. destroy them so that people can't eat them yeah. come on people they, they killed the uh, they killed a shitload of chickens too exactly Million. exactly Million. they are removing components from the food supply with this shit they're not coming after you with another fucking covid whatever all right. They don't even have all the shit that they need from the pandemic treaty in place yet until they get that fixed. There's not going to be another pandemic. So cool your fucking jets on all of that shit. Stop how do you stirring deal, people up? How do you deal with these household pets? You don't want anymore drizzle. You just stop feeding them. Exactly. They can't feed themselves. That's right. It's part of the degrowth agenda. The managed literally decline that every, we are going through. That is the decade of the 2020s. You look at virtually every single prophecy amongst the different tribes and what the different prophets and soothsayers have said over so many generations here on the back of the Great Turtle Island. And one common thread in all of them speaks of this great starving time mm -hmm. um and they've all had the visions when they would do their vision quest of so many starving drowning in food but they didn't know what to eat they didn't know what to drink they couldn't feed themselves the great starving time mm -hmm. um and you know it's not just in the United States with these culling of, you know, egg laying hens and chickens and hogs and cows and doing, been doing the same shit in uh, France and mm -hmm. all over Europe, you know, European Union. Uh, they, they say South now America there's as much well. pushback that they're going to suspend the cow farts legislation. I'm not naming the actual law, but, um, as much as they can, they're getting away with this stuff in South America too. Yeah, like there, there the is no corner of the planet that is being spared. Literally, humanity is under siege right now as they are dismantling the global food distribution system. That's why, by many metrics and standards, if you look at, um the way you know what's happening to resources in terms of uh well let me be specific like you know uh the ammonium nitrate fertilizer uh deliveries to uh the bread basket 
the Great Plains in the United States where most of our uh, uh, wheat and soy and barley and other grain, corn and other grains are grown, mainly corn. Um, and of course, a lot of that is, you know, GMO corn, GMO wheat, GMO soy. But um, by greatly restricting the fertilizer shipments in there, that that greatly restricts how much can be planted and how much of a harvest there is going to be next year. I mean, it, 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 so many different vectors you can see specifically where, in particular, the United States food sovereignty is being systematically de fucking destroyed. Hmm. And well, I mean, they're also probably not need it food all spread sovereignty out is the most important one. Without food sovereignty, you cannot withstand any siege of tyranny. Oh hell no! no you control the food death. supply. You control the population. That's right. Like that. That's Check that's and easy. Made. Easy to figure yeah. out. That's it. Uh, control the wow. information, We're you control what the population through. thinks. We're already halfway through this boogaloo. Everyone put on your Hawaiian print shirts at this time. That's right. The fact harder will continue until morale improves, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to uh, my buddy Hervoye over there at Geopolitics right. and Empire. That's one of his favorite memes. Just don't forget, folks. Don't become so black-pilled that you're just eternal, eternally cynical. We win. No, the whole point is we to win. continually rail against this shit. All right? Like, the, we cannot stop these people and what they are going to attempt to do. What we can do is call them out in public and make them look like the enormous jackasses that they are. That is how we win. That is exactly how we win. You defeat tyrants with ridicule. That's right. How do you defeat Bill Gates? You run up to him on the sidewalk with a pie and pie his face. True story. Actually happened. It did. I wonder if I can find it. Is it, is it still on YouTube, do you think? We'll tempt, we'll tempt fate some more here as uh, Mercury re went retrograde on Monday. We'll just play with all of the toys on the broadcast tonight. Fuck it. I still say my favorite Bill Gates quote of all time is when he's asked about Jeffrey Epstein. And he's like, well, he's dead. So I guess you got to be careful. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Could you be any more obvious? My God. Ep Epstein's totally dead. Am I right? <laughs> I don't, I, and I don't know who the fuck is serving Ghislaine Maxwell's time, but that ain't Ghislaine Maxwell. No. Let's see. We'd never do that to active Mossad agents. They run this country. We don't run them. Let's see if this works. I promise we did actually test it out yesterday. Een stralende Bill Gates, maar niet oh, voor lang. Oh, we're about to share some screens, huh? Hij krijgt tijd in het gezicht bij het binnenkomen van het concert Nauwblokkenbal. Oh, yeah. And I do have an update. I did That was beautiful. Today. I, I dove into the press conference given by the Maryland governor. Oh, God. And then um, Maryland governor. Engineers. Is that Hogan? St uh, Hogan still in office? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Anyways. He's about um, a dipshit and a half. My focus. Um, I can say was that because I used the, to work uh, just across the, the border. They're yeah. uh, right down the road from Langley, as it was. Wow. Yeah. Right off the GW Parkway. Yeah. Yeah. Good old uh, or, no no it, Baltimore Washington Parkway no it's the it's the George Washington Park it's, it's that, whatever the fuck the you want to call it dude yeah, yeah. G Dubs because I mean that's the back way to the BWI airport so so what was Larry talking about um so they were he and all the military brass were there talking about um the priorities and and how the you know an update on the ongoing salvage operation. 
what has to happen and, you know, timeline. Um, and then, you know, so of course the, the, the first order of business was to stabilize the Dolly, um, cargo ship, um, because they can't have, can't really do anything around the ship if the ship is still bobbing and weaving and moving around. And so it's fully secured and, Honestly, it's grounded and smashed into the fucking mud because it's out of the dredge channel. And it's got um, several thousand tons of fucking bridge draped across its bow, uh, as well as flooding in two of the front bow compartments. Um, So now that they stabilized the ship, uh, the next order of business, uh, which they're already doing now, uh, they've got some smaller barges and tugs in there and they're offloading, um, the empty containers and the hazmats, the, I'm sorry, hazardous material containers, which are always kept oh, that's the very good. nose of the ship. Nice. Which so is they've only the, been which, in the water which for the bridge. And like so they've got to get now. all that mess off the front. And there's a bunch of containers that also fell off the ship that were knocked off by the bridge falling on it into the water. But most of those are empty. Uh, but the whole issue is the fact that this happened at the federal channel, meaning the channel to Baltimore Harbor that is dredged by the federal government and maintained by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And with empty containers, hazmat containers, uh, concrete and steel girders from the bridge all strewn across the navigation channel. They, they cannot reopen it to navigation or send in dredgers to redredge the channel or anything yeah, until the steel and the concrete is completely gone. And this right. is technically not Chesapeake Bay. This is the alluvial mouth right. of the Patapsco River. And right. so we're talking about black water and just in some places like clay and just goo mud that's, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet deep. Um, and so wow. it, it's just in terms of technical hurdles, uh, it's it's going to be a real hassle once they get all the containers off of the nose of the ship to then try to free the ship because they will have to remove all of the bridge members that are still strewn and draped across the front of the ship itself. Hmm. Um, And then in order to get the ship out of there, they then have to fully clear the federal channel, the navigation channel, because it's got a draft of over 35 feet. Navigation channels dredged to 50 feet. Most of all the surrounding area is a draft or or depth to, you know, the mud. Uh, The river is only about 10 to 12 feet deep across the rest of that estuary opening. Because at that point, the Patapsco River is like, you know, four miles wide. But you've got this narrow channel that's 50 foot deep. And the rest of it is anywhere from 5 to 10 feet. And depending on the tides... At low tide, you know, it's almost just a narrow river with just mud flats everywhere. Because hmm. that's kind of what the Chesapeake Bay is. It's, Chesapeake Bay is just one big fucking mud hole full of crabs and pollution. Um, well, and, and crabs. And more crabs. Yeah. Um, mm, love me some crab cakes mm-hmm. with the mustard sauce. Damn straight. Oh, my God. But anyway, if you don't well, know, you used to you be really able to get good seafood out. in Baltimore. I don't know if you still can. I'm sure there. If you, you don't know, somewhere. you really need to. Yeah. I'll take a good crab cake over a lobster tail any fucking day of the week. Well, I mean, it. The more I find out about this particular port uh, that is essentially being shut down now uh, because of this event. And some of the uh, vessels that are now trapped in harbor because they can't get out until all the debris has been cleared from the bridge right. collapse. The more I start to lean towards it being uh, deliberate, you know, from a 
state affiliated actor in order oh, to again you know cripple uh, the military that's just what it looks like those are the there's optics there's one particular of it. distinction of the baltimore port the port of baltimore for the last 12 years running has offloaded more trucks and automobiles yeah 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 than any other port in the entire united states Yes. For 12 years running. Right. That's where most imported vehicles are offloaded. Right. And that's probably not going to change, which is, is an amazing logistical feat in and of itself, considering that they're not going to be able to handle the ships coming and going like they used to, but they're still going to be able to process about 90% of the vehicles. No, what I'm talking about are the two support ships, two of the largest in the entire U.S. Navy that are now trapped in that port for at least six months oh, until wow. that debris gets cleared. They can't yeah, and go you know, anywhere. The Navy only has two salvage ships running right now. And they're both deployed overseas. U.S. Army has some salvage watercraft. All three of those are in Gaza Strip right now stacking up chunks of concrete with fingers and teeth buried in them. That's right. Um, what you so, going to do now? Uh, you know, whenever there's a salvage operation needed by the U.S. Navy, they just go to private contractors because they don't have, I mean, they, they've allowed U.S. No, Navy I mean. salvage operations to atrophy to nothing. And so now that we've got a serious maritime ongoing disaster at the Port of Baltimore, we don't have resources. We don't have Navy salvage craft. We don't have, there's nothing. I mean, we, we're, we're getting no, no. cranes and other things brought in. I have a solution. But that's all private contractors. That's all private stuff. I mean, they're just having to throw money at different private right. operators Do that can charge that. whatever they want because right. there's nobody else. Keep doing that. Keep doing that until the problem's solved. There you go. There's your solution. Just keep throwing money at it. It's the American way. You know, there is one other question. Um, considering the ship drove into the supporting pier and destroyed the fucking bridge, who pays to replace the bridge? Who pays for all the dead Maryland DOT workers that died while they were filling potholes on the bridge? Um, oh, that's a, that's that? a good question. I, I'm going to say that it's the federal is it government. The ship owner? Is it the no. ship no, company? It's, it's the it... federal government. Matter of fact, I think Joe Biden is going to put it on his tab. All right. Yeah, I believe so, I heard that somewhere. Which means we're picking it up. I'm paying for it. You're paying for it. Right. There you go. Right. Just like everything else. Maritime law. Yeah. I got, well, I'm going to chalk this up as another win for Filipino sailors. Uh, Yona. Yona, good news. I have some good news that I can deliver on that exact front, as a matter of fact. Uh, we as a country, you and me and every other American, uh, we are going to save money now by no longer buying oil to refill the National Strategic Reserve. We're going to save money. So now that we've emptied the reserve, we'll just never fill it again. That's right. That's right. Because it I'm, oil costs too much right now, so we'll just wait until the price comes back eat, down, and then we're good. If you don't have we'll any food, save money to eat in the and process. you can't get food anywhere. What do you need gas for anyway? Where exactly, exactly. Summertime's coming. You're not going to have to worry about uh, heating the house as much, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, spending energy on that, uh, you just open up the windows. Open up the windows and and let the breeze. Uh, so you know. was it just a local phenomenon here? Because for, let's see, today's Thursday. So, wow, for three days running, there's been severe weather in the tri-state area here in Huntington, West Virginia, Ashland, Kentucky, South Point, Ohio. And okay. particularly in the last two days, we've had confirmed tornado touchdowns here in the tri-state, both in... Cabell County, West Virginia, Boyd County, Kentucky, and also 
here in Lawrence County, Ohio, some EF2s and EF3s. There was another EF2 earlier today in Catlicksburg, Kentucky, about a mile from where I filmed the short called Shawnee Land that uh, Drizzle edited and put up. Oh, yeah, us. that's going to go on TikTok soon. Shawnee Land. Um, That'll be where I filmed for TikTok. that Catlicksburg. I love there that was shit. a tornado that touched down, destroyed two houses. That'll probably go viral. Um, and so it, it's just crazy. I'm just how kidding. Much... They don't allow us to do that. Oh, <laughs> it's crazy how much <laughs> damage has been done here locally just in the last 48 hours. Uh, and that we've been hit by tornadoes two days in a row, considering it's unprecedented. It, it's unprecedented. But um, moreover, what's really piqued my interest now is the fact that we have a refinery in Catlicksburg. It was not damaged, fortunately. And like, for example, at the Kroger in Ashland grocery store, and at the Kroger Grocery in Huntington, uh, the one on Fifth Avenue, in the middle of the parking lots of both of those grocery stores are oil wells. You know, I mean, they've got the you know they've got the guardrails. Oh, and just stuff like that one off, school like in Los Angeles, yeah. Four parking spots, and at the one in uh, Ashland, and taking up you know about eight parking spots at the one in Huntington, and you know about, about once every couple weeks. You'll actually see the oil company come by and they'll hook up their hoses and they'll drain the, the 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 oil tanks that are right there next to the 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 derrick and the boom and that thing's just sitting there all day long yep. fucking pumping that oil out of that hole right in the middle of the fucking parking lot of the fucking grocery store. Two of them right here in the truck. I mean, that's why we have a refinery here. I mean, right. we're a major coal and oil producing region of the United States. Always have been. Um, but people don't really think of Appalachia as being an oil producing region. But I mean, that's why well, Standard they don't Oil think set of up Los shop Angeles as being an oil producing region either, but it is. Yeah. yeah. They, they just cover it up so that you don't see it everywhere all over the fucking place. What the hell do you think I mean, the La Brea tar pits were? Yeah, people? La Brea tar pit. You remember that shit from the seventies? They don't talk about the tar pits anymore, Yona. Nope. You ever notice that? They don't want but people to know. With all this going on with our local oil production and our local refinery and everything, what the fuck happened in the last forty-eight hours that? justified raising the local gas price here from three dollars and thirty four cents a gallon holy shit three dollars and ninety nine cents a gallon they just raised the gas price by 65 cents uh that must Snap be of a finger that must be a uh, carbon carbon tax uh it's either it's either the carbon tax or let's see all right so what was could... that just here or did gas go up where you're at by like 60 70 cents in the last two days i don't i don't have a car so i don't pay attention to the gas prices right uh i i look at the gas prices when i'm out and about but they don't always necessarily register because it's not something i have to budget for anymore um or at least not at the moment so I, I did notice when they went, because at one point during the winter, I want to say the prices around here got down to about two fifty a gallon. Like it wow. got down low enough to where I was, I was surprised that it was that low. And then before I knew it, it was back up over, uh, over $3 a gallon again. Last I saw was like maybe 323 I think, but that might've been like a week ago. And see, up until today, here in Huntington, tri-state area, the gas price is a little bit higher than it is if you go, you know, north or south or west into, you know, eastern Kentucky or into southern Ohio. And, you know, like halfway between here and Columbus, when you're hitting up above Lucasville and Circleville, there's like gas stations up there right now that are still like, below three dollars a gallon <laughs> but um the fact that they trebled the price by some 65 cents instantly overnight i don't 
I don't even know if that happened at all the gas stations or if it was just the speedways. Um, uh, or if it's just price gouging or if this is a oh, holy shit. trend, if something's happened and they've got something going in the national news that they can justify well, we've got um, a, jacking up gas prices. We've got a check-in from the uh, Rumble chat. It's uh, $5 a gallon in New Mexico. Yikes. So, uh, yeah. Apparently, I'm it, sure it, it's it is even more than up. that in California. It is going up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it we're wow. getting to the warmer period of the year. Not only that, you've got the the inter, interruption of the international shipping routes in the Red Sea. Uh, you've got uh, not just the Red Sea; they're also scared to even go into the Indian Ocean, whether to go up the Red Sea or go down and around the Cape of Good Hope, because the Houthis have hit ships that had turned away from the Bab al-Mandab and were heading southeast, I'm sorry, southwest down the eastern coast of Africa toward Madagascar and were hit by Houthis. Damn. And so, I don't know what the fuck they're doing now. I mean, I, I guess they have to sail for Diego Garcia and then go below Madagascar to get over there now. It's, it's pretty wild. Well, I mean, you know, the other thing, of course, is always... In order to get people to give up their gasoline powered vehicles, you know, Americans are not going to give up their cars. All right. You're going to have to price them out of the market one way or another. And I mean, they've, they've slowly and steadily been working on it. You know, the, the yeah. cost of the automobile, the insurance, the maintenance, the gas, all of that shit adds up. But when the gas price goes sky high, people don't drive as much. Can't afford it. Well, yeah. You're going to have to start making choices, especially if the price doesn't come down soon. And, you know, so are you going to are you going to live out in the in the county where you have to spend twice as much each week on gas in order to get to work in the grocery store and all of that? Or are you just going to go ahead and say, fuck it, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out that 15-minute that walking city that they put together in Austin and see what that's all about and, and try and save myself a little bit of money in the process. Because you know Americans love, they fucking love saving money, Yona. They fucking yep. love it. They feel like fucking champions when they can save two cents on their goddamn Big Mac. And save more money at Walmart. Shout out to the People's Republic of China. Thanks for keeping the shelves full. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a little bit salty tonight because I had the, the whole food poisoning thing over the weekend. So I've had been trying to put extra electrolytes in my body this week. That might be overflowing. You know, Brondo has electrolytes. Plants love it, too. Yeah. Plants love Brondo. So, Taiwan got hit <laughs> yeah, with you ready the to strongest off? earthquake in, I guess, about the last 25 years. I want to say it was like a 7 point something. 7.5. 7. 7.4. There's a 7.5, and then it was immediately followed by like a 6.5 aftershock. So they got yeah. they got shook pretty good. Yeah, I think there was over two hundred aftershocks or something like that. Holy I shit! But, wow. Um, there's currently, as of the last report that I read, uh, about seven hundred people are still believed to be trapped in rubble, and there has now been a total confirmed number of deaths of ten people. That's it. That's it. Wow. I mean, to, to compare this to the earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria several months ago, it, it pales by comparison in terms of the death toll and damage. Well, the, but granted, the area that was hit in Turkey and Syria was not exactly, uh, you know, uh, premium engineering in, for withstanding shaking and, and everything. Right. Whereas, where you know, there were some actual skyscrapers in Walling City that survived this earthquake because they oh, had yeah. the dampening one... balls and all these other technologies uh, yeah. in these new, and, and they survived. They, yeah, they the survive. footage of the big towers. Engineering work. And they're just, they're just sitting there just swaying a little bit. 
That was that was incredible. The other thing that was incredible is it looked like a lot of the structural failures, again, you know, shout out Baltimore, they were all like single point failures. Because, yeah. yeah, there were buildings that toppled, but they didn't crumble. They, they were literally like snapped in half. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, you know, like, like what, Chris, uh, what Chris Rankcast was talking about the other day, um, you know, if or perhaps more accurately, when the new Madrid Earth, uh, the new Madrid earthquake zone, the new Madrid fault right there where the uh, Mississippi and Ohio point. River join right there where Missouri, Illinois and Kentucky all touch um, and Tennessee and Arkansas. When that goes off, St. Louis, Memphis, Louisville, Cincinnati, yeah. so much of the middle of the United States with these huge cities. But I, I'm going to say Memphis and St. Louis are going to take it the worst. I mean, because good St. Louis. Most of the it. cities, I mean, most of the buildings are brick or cinder block. There's no retrofitting. There's no. It, there's five. It's just going to be rubble. It's going to be absolute because the other issue is. Well, I know, think the arch at, will survive. <laughs> most of the construction around there is on alluvial soils, so you get any type of earthquake over five magnitude with those clay alluvial soils. There's going to be so much fucking geotechnical mm. pumping under the ground. I mean, it, it's just going to. It, it's literally going to be grabbing every building by the foundations and and squeeze and pull, squeeze and pull. I mean, they're all it's just disaster. You don't have anchor ties. You don't have cross beams. You don't, I'm, none of this retrofitting that I'm aware of has been done in Memphis or St. Louis. They're not, they're not, it, it's not the same awareness as like Taiwan or San Francisco or, you well, know, I mean, they other haven't, areas that they have haven't like written had into an their earthquake building code, in you know. over 200 years. I mean, you got to go all the way back to the... Uh, Rob the says it's going to be one month after the eclipse. I don't know. I'm that's not going to put a date on it. No. What he says, that's that... Oh, he wants to know what the odds over under. One month after the eclipse. eclipse what do you think? New Madrid earthquake? Yeah. Because there's going to be an earthquake. That's the, the last time that there was an earthquake on the New Madrid fault. Uh, like a serious one which was in 1811, that was immediately following an eclipse. Not, not immediately following, but it was following an eclipse. So apparently you know, there is some sort of correlation there. I have felt earthquakes several times in my life. I felt, <laughs> I felt several two, in like 18 months in Mexico. What are you yeah, talking about? I felt two tremors here living in Huntington. Mm -hmm. Um, but they were just minor tremors, and had I not noticed the 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 picture frame swinging on the wall, I really wouldn't have even known. But when I saw the picture starting to sway, and then I kind of got that queasy feeling in my stomach, I'm like, "Oh my god, hmm. we're having a little bit of an earthquake." And then I looked up, and like the epicenter was in Bland, Virginia, I think, oh. um, probably fracking or something. It was only like a two point five or. Something. I don't know, but oh, I, yeah. I felt it. But I'm surprised you could that, feel that, yeah. That's nothing at all by comparison to the three earthquakes that I got to experience in Ecuador. <laughs> oh, I bet. Right between two active volcanoes on a fucking tectonic vault. Like, oh, fuck yeah. That, that's what I'm talking about. That scared the holy shit out of me. Oh, my God. I mean, when, when the walls are moving different directions and like, and you're and you're on the third floor, and you look out. And... Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, because I was on for every earthquake that I experienced in Acapulco, I was on the ground floor. And I'm trying to remember. I think the strongest one was like a five point five point two or five point three, something like that. So it was it was a pretty good shake. Um. But there were like there were a couple of nights I remember laying in bed uh, and waking up to the bed shaking. 
Yep. Well, to the whole room shaking. And there were uh, there were a couple others that that were uh, not as bad, just little little shake for about ten seconds or so. Yeah. Yeah. But it's I, funny honestly, since I got here since I got here to Texas, I could swear I've felt at least like a, a two pointer or almost a three a couple of times. Well, you know, they are still absolutely fracking the holy shit out of East Texas. You can look at the aerial photography between, uh, well, just for example, between Jasper and Marshall, Texas. Just go into Google satellite view between Jasper and Marshall along the U.S. Route 59 corridor, roughly, you know, through like Lufkin and that area, Mm -hmm. and start zooming in. And you'll see this grid pattern just as far as the eye can see. And if you just keep zooming in, you'll see every single one of those dots and clearings is a fracking pad. Wow. Um, and it, it, it's it, that's, that's even the case so like right here. in the middle of um, Tarrant County and Dallas County, Texas, right in the middle of the DFW metro area, like. Like, there was a big thing going on over there by Chisholm Trail Parkway in Fort Worth at that elementary school where they had a frack pad within, like, I think about 50 yards of the school building itself with, you know, flare pipes. So, you know, it's got flame 24-7 and, you know, um, and the air quality is just total shit because it's venting, you know, VOCs and but there's no zoning in Texas, so you know that's cool. Totally fine. You can put a refinery right between a hospital and a and a farm and a school. Sure, what's wrong All with on that? Same street. It's a free country. You should be able to do what you want. I believe so. Anyway. Well, I could definitely see the need for planning when it comes to public infrastructure like sewers, water, streets, electric, internet is the utility itself, you know, um, and that that infrastructure is different whether you're talking about industrial use, commercial use, or residential use. So, on that idealistic level, I can understand planning and zoning and how it makes sense. But in the practical real world realm that we live in, when you deal with planning and zoning commission, that's just that's just for it's you and literal me, fucking communism. It's literally a group of town fathers who get to decide what you will or will not be allowed to do with your own private property. Yeah, it's called an economic development board. Make it make sense. It's it's America. That's just how it works. You know, you were talking about uh, extreme weather earlier, Yona. And I noticed that because there there apparently was a lot of extreme weather in the country this week. Uh, you guys had uh, tornadoes in Ohio, which is uh, pretty unusual. And there yes. was a massive blizzard that hit the East Coast. Uh, I think yep. it's still going on in, in it's some the places. the same storm. Is it the same, the storm? same storm? Oh, wow. So it's just like wreaking havoc across the country. Well, it was already, it's basically like a land based cyclone huh. when it comes ripping through here. And it hit a cold front when it reached the Pennsylvania state line at the east end of Ohio. And when it hit that cold front, that spinning vortex, when it hit the cold front, immediately became what's known as a nor'easter. And has then, since that time, has been spinning and churning its way going up the New England coast, just burying them in snow. Well... I've and it's seeing... awfully late for a nor'easter. April is a little bit. pretty it's not late unusual, for nor'easter. Though. It's not unusual, uh, and I'm sure it has has something to do with the the El Nino, La Nina, blah blah blah, whatever. I don't know. 
it's it's not unusual for it to be snowing at this particular time in the New England area. Yeah. It's it's just not. But this is what I thought was a little bit unusual in some of the reports of the weather that I was seeing this week. I saw a lot of reports of people dying in automobiles due to falling tree limbs from extreme weather. Hmm. And I'm like, that seems kind of odd that, that I would be seeing like a story from Philadelphia and a story from New York and a story from Boston. Are these people sleeping in their car? There's a lot of people that, 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 live in their cars and work in their cars i mean (laughs) for christ's sake i wrote a whole ass song about it yeah and it's on my debut album with uh red fella called um local yokel grand theft world remix nonetheless time stamp tramp camp somehow survive you know that song Hmm. local yokel it's all about, you know, a guy that works at a fast food joint and lives in his car. And in in fact, um yesterday or was it Tuesday? Uh today's Thursday. I think yeah, it was yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, around one thirty in the afternoon, I think when we were, when my wife was driving and we were going through Ashland and we pulled up to a stop sign on Bath Avenue at 14th street. And I looked to the left and I'm like, holy shit, look at that car. It's crushed. There's this monster 48 inch fucking red Oak, probably at least 130 feet tall. That was oh, wow. snapped in half at its base because it was a double pronged tree, and that one prong, forty eight inches uh, by itself, went down and smashed this Lexus, pushed the roof flat with where the roof was flat with the hood, but the tree hadn't gone any further because. There happened to be one branch that was aiming straight down and punched through the roof, uh, through the middle of the car, and the tree was supporting itself with this massive branch that had buried into the blacktop through the middle of the car. Damn. And so I took a video with my phone, and I put it up on the AM Wake Up. Because um, you can do that with Telegram, as I found out. And I did that oh, once yeah. before, and Death to Tyrants made that driving with Yona video. That's right. <laughs> and then when I saw we that, that, I was like, oh, uh, Saturday do a night. Telegram video real quick. And I thought, you know what? I need to start doing that for us. It'd be a lot easier doing it that way. We're just having even shorter clips, and that's much more TikTok friendly and, and not nearly as labor intensive for the drizzle to have to sit there and cut and clip and paste and super glue together you know yeah because i don't all have these time for that shit anymore <laughs> clips you know i mean i it, wish it, i it's did great when it's great when the yona goes out and films you know five total hours of content but when the fuck are you just supposed to do that shit i don't know and why <laughs> well we know why it's just finding the time <laughs> to be able to do it like i need an assistant man I need somebody yeah. to, I don't know, free up some time for me to do other things, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a new baby, world. Loud as it is look. now, I've got hours and hours of shit all just piled up there. I mean, we, we've got a huge well to draw from. Well, that's good. Because I would like to, to put out some more of those stories. I am planning on uh, taking, so right now, uh, the account is limited to uh, videos of 10 minutes or 10 gigabytes or less, right? So what I'm going to uh, do... On the TikTok? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just like go through the entire library and like start picking out stuff to to post to it, right? Just to to get like engagement and all of that sort of stuff going. 
Um, so that, that hopefully fans. we can get to the point where we're actually doing three hour live streams on TikTok. Yeah. That's, that's but, my I mean, end goal stands right now with all the editing and videos that we've put out together. Other than the Mothman video, um, all the other videos are under 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. And the, the moth mothballs I can, I can chop up into like a bunch of different little bites. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. Cause the, 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 be the mothballs has mothballs has like three different segues in it anyway. Oh yeah. Or it's easily, it was epic. Yeah. Dude, that was, that was almost like feature film length. It was yeah. incredible. I couldn't believe it. There, was there, a lot there are of people listening right now that have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> you realize that? Yeah. Because nobody goes and watches the back catalog anymore. I don't think. Yeah. Like, I, don't see, I don't see the view counts change a whole lot, but then again, I guess I'm probably not supposed to, right? That's the whole point of being shadow banned. Yeah, I, that, I just, I can't. Knowing what I know now, I just can't put any faith in all in the metrics and the numbers that we're given. I just, I, how can you trust it? I mean, w- w- once they lose credibility, it's not like you just give it back. I mean, it's gone. And so, I mean, I just, I don't consider their metrics as credible because I know the whole, the manipulation with, you know, sock accounts and robots and, you know, it, it's interesting you see these channels and, and content creators with apparently huge followings and there's like no interaction in the chat. There, there's It's deadville. And yet then you go to some bougie, tiny little click of followers and you go to the chat and it's just blowing the fuck up. There's like mm-hmm. 30, 40 people just going at it in chat. This guy's got like, what, 200 followers? It's like, I don't understand. The motherfucker with like 1.1 million followers, and there's like three people in the chat. And two of them are definitely bots. You know, I mean, it's... The manipulation is so over the top. You can actually see it. Yeah. Taste it, touch it, smell it, feel it. Well, it's, it. it's like uh, Hotep Jesus was saying... Just before we went on the air is like, I don't, I don't see the same reality that other people see. I just see lines of green code everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, that's a pretty good analogy. I think. Cause it's, it is so obvious, right? Like what, People are lost. I say people are lost in the fact that dare I say, I would, I, I feel safe in saying most people today can't just tell you if you ask them where you're standing at right now when it rains. What what creek does that water drain to? And what river does that creek go into? And what sea does that river go into? Do you know what watershed you're walking on? Are you're in you're in Houston. Do you know you're on Buffalo Bayou watershed, or are you on the Brazos River Valley? Or yeah, again, just one example. Another example: most people get in the woods, they see berries and different trees and stuff. They don't know what's edible. I mean, I, you would think most people can tell a sugar maple from a hard maple or an oak. But no, no, you'd be I wrong. wouldn't. Well. No yeah. idea. I would not automatically assume that because I understand how human beings operate. But th- this is knowledge that I've always had. I mean, I get you know, I, it, it was a privilege to grow up as a surveyor's apprentice and to be taught all this stuff as a chain carrier on the crew, beginning at age six. You know, I look back on it now and. God damn it, there went my childhood. I was a fucking slave my whole life. But anyways, I learned surveying. It's great. Um, but, you know, um, just this awareness of where you are, where the water goes, um, and what you can eat for free, and where does it grow. 
I mean, the, that's just not an awareness most people even have. I mean, you obviously by default have to live in some type of rural setting to even be able to have any type of knowledge of the land itself, aside Pretty from much, the humans yeah. that claim to own it. Um, and so, you know, the, the, we're we're surrounded by food, but where so many people are ignorant of it, they'll just starve being surrounded by food because it's not a drive through window. It's not already been cooked. The meat's not been butchered right. and it's not at the supermarket marinated and grilled. And, you know, I don't want to get blood on my hands and, you know, yeah. But we're again, so it's part of being death. domesticated. I mean, we're so removed from death. Uh, and, and that's the real, I think the real shock that's about to hit the United States. Mm-hmm. We, we, this current generation of Americans and going back two, three generations, no one alive can remember the American Civil War. No one alive right. can remember massacres of thousands of Americans at a time multiple times a day, day after day, after day, after day, after day. But it's coming. And it's not going to be Americans killing Americans. It's going to be, well, it's going to be blue helmets. And this, the, the plans have been laid out for a long fucking time, for decades. It's not going to be your local sheriff that comes for your gun. No, 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 be no, 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 no. NATO and UN troops. No. Period. And they've already decided, I mean, it's already U.S. public law. Again, go to the Bill Cooper from last night. It's published. We have receipts. You can read it yourself for free at the public library. And if they don't have it, like you said, interlibrary loan, you tell them to get it. Tell them to get it there. Red bound, hardback book. Get hardbacks with the hardbacks. That's That's right. Jump into some consonants and vowels and put those words together get transitive with your verb diagram if you need to all right so we got we got less than 15 minutes left yona and uh we really we still haven't uh touched on it much at all uh monday it's the big day yep the the great uh transversal in in the skis yeah and it could change again. You think? They had done their calculations. Yeah. We knew where the path was going to be. Well, dude, that people that, made plans. Oops, that earthquake in Taiwan had a rounding error. And, right. Yeah. The earthquake may have affected the wobble of the planet, which, of course, would affect the path of the totality depending upon the severity of the wobble, you see. Right. So, yeah. And that's why they just moved the track of it by like. It's like a, in some spots on the map by over a hundred miles. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see, uh, who, <laughs> who ends up, uh, outside of, uh, I guess, cause that's the whole point, right? People are actually like traveling to go somewhere to see this thing. Cause apparently it's, it's going to like change their lives or something. I don't understand exactly well, what well, the plan Steve is, was but talking about that. On well, AM yeah, wake up, but a friend like, of his going to Cincinnati for it, and it's not even going to hit Cincinnati now. Exactly, and they already made plans. Exactly, exactly. Think oh. about think about the frustration that that is going to create in people. That's like a free floating anxiety farm, man. Bruh, you, you'll Nothing be able to a- to work all kinds of juju off of shit like that. God, man. Yeah. And when's the next eclipse going to be? Talk about a, a, a case of eclipse blue balls. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's perfect for the frustration aggression complex. Maybe, maybe that's what's going to be, you know, what, what really starts to set things off. Man, so much has happened just in the last three days. It's, I mean, it's just really just still reeling trying to take it all in. <clears throat> and I didn't even mention the warm, genial phone call between the sniffer-in-chief and uh, uh, Xi Jin Pooh Bear. 
Oh, they had a First phone call? First time they had spoken since his big gap when they met in San Francisco. Um, and he made his gaffe before old Pooh Bear could even get on his plane and fly out of SFO, and he's already shitting on China. Yeah. Um, but apparently they had a long two-and-a-half-hour conversation the other day, according to sources at the White House. Yeah, I don't uh, believe it. I don't believe and, you had a two-and-a-half-hour uh, conversation know, and, and with anybody. Great and and, uh, and now the United States and the U.S. Uh, now the U.S. military and the Chinese Red Army are going to be coordinating again and and letting each other know what they're doing. And, you know, you just got so much accomplished in this two hour phone call. Um, and then as soon as the phone call was over, Oh shit. Earthquake in Taiwan. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. And we've got, we've got sometimes. CERN is going to discover the answers to the secrets of the universe on Monday. That's right. During the eclipse, even though they're not in the United States. So I, I still don't understand why they have to time it up with an eclipse on another continent. I, I guess that's how science works. I don't know. I'm, they have their science. They have their Hadron particle accelerator and all that stuff. But don't forget, Drizzle, we have the marmots. Yeah, well, yeah. That's why we win. There'll be another marmot. You can bet on it. I can't. I can't wait to see what the uh, the butterfly effect is from that particular marmot. You know the original marmot that fucked up the collider, right? They took it to a taxidermist. They had it stuffed. You can actually go see the certain marmot. It's in a glass case. Seriously? Yeah. At CERN? Is yeah. it like behind the Shiva statue? Like they, they, you know, shit blew up smoke everywhere. They went down. They found the fucking marmot. Like, oh, my God. The fucking marmot got in here. How the fuck did it get it down here? I mean, you know, marmot's a groundhog. That's kind of what they do. Um, and so, yeah, they stuffed it and put it in a glass case. This is the marmot fucked up the uh, billion-dollar fucking collider that we had to fix. Wow. Damn you, Marmot. Talk about last mistake you'll ever make. Shit. That Marmot took one for the team. That Marmot took one for all of planet Earth. That's right. God bless that Marmot. So, what are you... You may be in the search for a God particle, but... We have mammals. What are your predictions for the Great American Eclipse, Yona? What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. I think it's going to be a great way to get the gas prices back up to five dollars a gallon nationwide. I can see that. It's going to be so much easier to ration everything during a war economy when we switch to the Fed coin. Just saying. With digital currency and social credit score, you don't have to worry about. Because, you know, last time we did this was World War II. Mm -hmm. You had to have coupons for tomatoes and coupons for eggs and coupons for milk. Because, you know, war rations. Right. And Everybody war could prices. only get so much. Um, and so we're going to do it again. Yeah. Only this time we're going to call it a social credit system. And if they decide that uh, you've had enough eggs for the month, even though you still got some egg coupons in your in your digital wallet, oh, they just expired. Well, you won't be able to get the brown eggs, but you can still get the vaccine eggs, and you need to oh, get up the to fortified date eggs. Yeah, yeah, the fortified eggs. Those, those things are great. I hear. Yeah, even you, even you better make you than one of those what the, sandwiches the, uh, with chickens the, the fried vaccine eggs and vaccine sausage. Put some vaccine lettuce on there. Put it on the vaccine bread. <laughs> You're covered. I'm so I'm curious. I'm gonna have to find out exactly how they fortify the eggs because it's not like so like if you're if you're giving it like an injection or something, you're gonna break the shell, 
which is going to ruin the egg, right? So they they can't break the shell in order to fortify them. So yeah, it's like I, it's just hard for me to imagine that they would find a way to incubate viruses and in eggs. Wait a second. That's actually what, well, no, I was going to say that's how they do it, but I had to correct myself before I ever even said it because I remember from the Milken Institute thing. Yeah, where that's not how they do it They anymore. used to incubate right. viruses and eggs, but that took too long. Well, that was back when we were more primitive. <laughs> yeah, because progress always moves in a forward direction. Now and you don't have to do that. Now you just other get lies the my government code told me. presto, brand new vaccine. Yeah. We never isolated the virus because we didn't have to. We've already got the code for it. In in hours, not even days. <laughs> what are the chances? Anyways. <laughs> do, you, do you think that the the full truth of that is ever going to come out? I don't think it will. Mm. And I think that's the whole point. I think the story was meant to have holes from the beginning. Yeah. That never get filled in. We'll we'll find out the full story of JFK before we ever find out the full story of the Rona. You think? Because the Rona is straight up Pentagon operation, military operation, warp speed, military operation. All of this dispersal of biological agents, call them super colds or flus or coronavirus, whatever the fuck you want to call it, military operation. All of it. That's why there's never going to be a day of accounting for um, those that followed commands of the Pentagon. They were doing what they were told. And again, to quote the Bill Cooper, go to the U.S. Code. Mm -hmm. The federal government has a fiduciary responsibility to advocate for vaccines. I mean, just read the laws of this land and you'll find out who wears the pants. And most of these laws have been laws of the land for 40, 50, 60, some cases, 70, 75 years. Mm -hmm. Again, it all goes back to the Truman administration and to World War II. A lot of it does, yeah. You know, here we look back now at the 1950s and the growing middle class and people coming out of the Levitt towns and such as, you know, this antebellum golden age of wealth redistribution when in fact, that was the beginning of the new America with no more sovereignty. That was the beginning mm -hmm. of international global trade consumption America. Keep up with the Joneses. And slowly but surely, in order to get your Frigidaire and everything else that the Joneses have, you're buying Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Mexican. You're buying imported goods. And now you look at American consumption today, most people can really only afford to shop at Walmart or Dollar General, and it's all Chinese shit. Mm -hmm. All of it. Our mortal enemy, the one that gives us toilet paper and soap and toothpaste, and all of our other daily necessities that we buy at Dollar General and Walmart every fucking day. Our mortal enemy. Yeah, it keeps providing us with all the daily essentials because we have no food sovereignty. We have without food sovereignty, there is no sovereignty. Nothing else matters. Period. That's why I, number one guy I keep going back to listen to his latest videos religiously. Ice Age Farmer. Shout out to the Ice Age Farmer. Dude, fire. Yeah. Hopefully he comes back one day. Well, I'm afraid we had to put the seat belt lights and the no smoking lights back on the airplane here, folks. We are on our final approach. Oh, yeah. um, oh shit. It's going to be a rough landing. Uh, we are we are in a Boeing 737 Max. It's always a hard landing, you know. And not rough. One of the you uh, don't want to scare people. Gear will not you just want descent. to excite them slowly. Yeah. You can't get the Slightly. wing uh, gear to protract. So um, <laughs> we're just going to do a belly landing. So uh, just brace for impact, folks. Uh, we're about to release you back to your regularly scheduled uh, lives here. That's right. As always. Well done. Talk safety. 
Well Bush done. Dole again. Many blessings. And take care out there, folks. It's getting yeah. dicey. Oh, it's about to get really weird. But it's also going to get fun. Oh, so, yeah. You know, the, the, the kids these days like to talk about pills. Uh, just be careful which one you swallow down and make sure you have uh, a counter on hand, you know, is the, to balance. To, in case you go too far in one direction, you can bring yourself back to equilibrium. Um, all right. I guess that's it. Yeah. Don't forget Eclipse special this Monday, folks. Take care.